All right, welcome. So today we have Fafnir here in the Smite public test server. So with me being in the public test server, things can change for Fafnir as far as, you know, the numbers on his cooldowns and how much, you know, damage he outputs, all that could be changed. And the same goes for items, just, just kind of keep that in mind. Now, Fafnir, if you do not know, he is indeed a Norse Guardian, so he'd probably be mainly played in the uh, support role. However, he could maybe be played in the solo lane. Depends on his damage output, really. And so in case you haven't seen his in-game model, let's take a quick look at him, kind of spin him around so you can see his face and his awesome hammer, things like that. So he looks really awesome, as well as I should show you guys his dragon form here real quickly. So pretty much like all the Norse gods, he has two different stances. However, you cannot uh, stay in dragon stance forever. It does have a, a timer uh, scaling from 20 seconds up to 40 seconds. And of course, as, as well as all the other stance switchers, he, his abilities do kind of change a little bit. Uh, but yeah, so let's kind of turn him around so you can see his the front side of him. It looks really cool. So enough of that nonsense. Let's go ahead and go into his abilities. Now, there's a lot of walls of text here, so I won't cover every single thing here. So feel free to pause the video if you have the time for, or I will have the patch notes in the description below so that way you can check it out for yourself at your own pace. So again, this video might be a little bit longer because he has a lot of things to him. So sorry about that. But thanks if you stick around and no problem if you can't stick around for the entire video. So let's get right into it, starting with this passive. He gains bonus gold, which is great for support. He gains bonus gold for minion structures, kills, and assists. And as well as when you have 1,000 gold in hand, meaning you have 1,000 gold, you haven't spent it yet, you're out jungling or doing whatever, you have extra protections, which I find is really good. However, I don't feel like you don't really get to full build as a support too often, so not all the time you will really have those protections. However, if you do get ahead and you have your full entire build, you're going to have bonus protections. Or maybe if you can make it in the solo lane, you can get your build done faster and you have bonus protections. However, I find it a pretty nice passive to have. Next, his curse is strength. Now, this is his main source for initiating, I feel, uh, and as his main source at his chance of being a solo laner. Basically, it's like souls, I think it's souls one, but it's souls two, where it's a targeter like this. And when it comes in contact with the god, it stuns the god for one second and explodes around that target and slowing all targets around it for up to 40%. And yeah, it's pretty much a recolor of, of souls two, I think it is. I forgot, I forgot what it's called. And what's great about this ability, it does a good amount of damage uh, from mid to late game, so you can actually start clearing minion waves. And it, again, it goes right through minions, so if you're pretty good at it, you can shoot right through the minion wave and hit the enemy god behind it. You can do something like that, so it's really cool. And as well as when you are in dragon form, this ability changes a little bit. It turns into uh, protection shred as well. It has protection shred up to 40% protection shred. That's really good. As well as it has a damage over time effect, I believe. Uh, so it's like one damage every second for three seconds. Yeah, so turns green and as you see has like a damage over time effect which is really good so nothing too fancy now let's get into his two what kind of makes him more into a support so you can buff himself or his allies with a 50 percent attack speed buff which is huge so let's say you have a artemis on your team artemis as a, a i believe her kit she has a steroid that's an 80 percent attack speed increase so you throw this on her and then she gives another 80 percent to herself and she has all this attack speed and you can just burn down whatever she wants as well as have bonus damage and the self healing is actually pretty decent if you do invest into like a slow lane build or jungler build basically we have some power his heals almost as good as some of the warriors which i find is pretty good uh and as well as when you're dragon form you this <laughs> becomes a, a huge targeter and you can buff multiple allies so really great when you're sieging the fire giant or towers anything you just buff everybody's attack speed by 50 percent and life's good Next, he has his three, which is a really, uh, the leap it can go so far. And it goes even further in dragon form, I'm pretty sure. Now what this does, you can leap to that point, do damage, and as well as disarm the targets in front of him for two seconds. Really strong. As well as in dragon form, he can leap much further again, and his damage increase, and it does a tick damage, uh, damage over time effect. And he also stuns the closest enemy to him for two seconds in addition, in addition to disarming. So... He has a lot to his kit, like protection shreds, slow, attack speed buff, self heal, bonus damage, and just damage over time effect, disarms, and stuns. Like, he has a lot to his kit. A little bit bloated um, as far as how much tools he has, but I don't really feel like his OP at all. And then his ultimate, pretty much, you just turn into the dragon, as I showed you here. Oh, that was, that was a three. Wrong button. <laughs> So he turns into a dragon. Again, you cannot be damaged while you're transforming into a dragon. However, once you're transforming back into a dwarf, you can be damaged. So look out for that. 
So when you transform, when you transform into a dragon, you do a explosion damage all around you. That was a huge green circle that you saw around me, and it applies a damage over time effect. The damage over time effect is actually not too strong, as you can see the duration scales from 20 to 40 seconds, as well as his auto attacks turn into a dragon breath, which looks really cool, and you can just hold it down forever. It's like a spray. So you can hit multiple people with it. You can spin around in circles if you want. You can draw your name or whatever. However, this uh, his auto attacks do not get affected by item effects. So uh, I'm pretty sure it doesn't work with Haste Metallus. It doesn't work with Telekines. It doesn't work like that. It's just Dragon Breath, which doesn't do a whole lot of damage. Majority of the time, you're probably doing more damage with your auto attacks as a dwarf anyway. And that's pretty much it. I may be wondering why I have Bancroft's talent here on the bottom right. Well, ben Bancroft's talent has 100 magical power, and with that, you can see the actual scalings on his abilities for his magical power scaling from from his abilities to additional damage on his on his abilities here. So overall, his cooldowns are pretty low, uh, so that's really good for him. His three has a little bit longer of a cooldown. So as far as different combinations, I find myself almost doing like a, like a 1-3 combination so that you act like a Raijin and you throw your 1 and you do something like that. You can be a little bit bursty like that and be really aggressive. However, trying to trying to give yourself the buff sometimes in the heat of the moment where you're moving around real fast can be a little annoying to uh, to actually get to yourself. But as you see, having that, uh, that attack speed is amazing. So you can definitely try different builds with like Telekines, maybe Demo uh, Demonic Grip, things like that. So... That pretty much wraps it up, so feel free to let me know your thoughts on Fafnir in the comment section below. Again, he has a Guardian. Maybe he can play us in the uh, solo lane. I don't know. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching, and peace.